Welcome to Crime Funnel, where we look at all things true crime, from interrogations to warm body cam footage, from sentencing to true crime stories. On May 13th, 2016, Jennifer Kane was supposed to report to her new job at noon. Jennifer got the job through her good friend Tanya's fiancé, Robert Hayes. Robert also happened to be the head of maintenance for the apartment building Jennifer lived in with her boyfriend, Daryl Wilson. The apartment building contained only two apartments. One was occupied by Brian Greenwell and Jody Cecil, while the other was occupied by Jennifer and her live-in boyfriend, Daryl Wilson. Tanya became concerned on the morning of the 13th because she hadn't been able to contact Jennifer, so Tanya asked Robert to go to Jennifer's apartment and check on her. Robert showed up at the apartment around noon and knocked on Jennifer's door, but no one answered, so he left. By that evening, Tanya still hadn't heard from Jennifer, so she and Robert went back to the apartment building. Again, no one answered when he knocked on Jennifer's apartment door, but he found the door was unlocked, so he went inside. The apartment was relatively small and the door opened into a living room and kitchen area. The only bedroom in the apartment was to the right and the entrance to the bedroom was between the living room and kitchen. From the doorway, Robert could see Daryl lying on the bed in the bedroom. Robert called out to him but Daryl didn't answer. So he stepped into the apartment a little further and saw Jennifer on the bedroom floor as well, lying between the foot of the bed and a dresser. Robert saw Daryl take a shallow breath and immediately called 911. Jennifer had been shot in the head three times and Daryl had been shot in the head once. Jennifer was pronounced dead at the scene, but Daryl was rushed to the hospital and miraculously survived. Robert went to Brian and Jody's apartment twice, both times with police officers present. The first time was out of concern that whoever killed Jennifer and shot Daryl may have also attacked them. Robert said that the first time he went into the apartment that looked lived in, but Greenwell and Cecil weren't there. The second time he went several days later, much of the clothing and personal items that were there before were now gone, and in his opinion, it looked like someone left in a hurry. Due to the severity of Daryl's brain injury, he was unresponsive for a month after the shooting, but by the end of June, Daryl's condition had improved. He was paralyzed from the neck down and was unable to speak, but he was able to understand questions and respond to them by mouthing words, nodding, blinking, and furrowing his brow. The lead detective on the case, Brian Royce, interviewed Daryl at a care facility. Again, Daryl wasn't able to speak, so Detective Royce had to interpret Daryl's nonverbal responses the best he could. From this interview, Detective Royce discerned that Brian and Jody were Daryl's neighbors and that they were responsible for the shootings. Detective Royce also believed that Daryl gave him an affirmative response when he said, So you and Jennifer were in a domestic situation. They stepped in. You guys kind of turned from fighting with each other to arguing with them and it escalated. Does that sound right? However, Detective Royce was not able to determine who shot Jennifer and Daryl or which of the two victims were shot first. Investigators were finally able to locate Brian and Jody in mid-July, and Detective Royce interviewed both of them, separately on July 19th. Jody was interviewed first. Royce said she was normal, chatty, and upbeat when the interview began. When asked about the shootings, she said she'd heard about it on the news, but denied any involvement. She said she'd not been to her apartment for a couple days prior to the shootings, though she did return to her apartment a few days after they occurred. She also offered some speculation to Detective Royce about what may have happened. Jody said perhaps Daryl shot Jennifer or vice versa though she personally believed that whoever shot them was actually looking for her, and this was in some way related to Jody's involvement in narcotics. Detective Royce then showed her the video of the interview with Daryl. This was the first time Jody learned that Daryl had survived, as that information had not yet been made public. Detective Royce said that upon seeing the video, Cecil's demeanor changed from jovial to scared and worried. Her story likewise changed. Jody then claimed that Jennifer and Daryl were fighting. Jennifer showed up at Jody's house pleading for help, saying that Daryl was beating her, and that her and Brian went with Jennifer back to her house. Brian had his handgun with him, a fight ensued, and he accidentally shot Daryl, but she was unsure how Jennifer ended up shot. During the trial, the evidence showed Jennifer was shot in the head three times, two of which were at close range, leaving stippling behind, and Daryl was shot once in the head, from the rear, at a downward angle. Also revealed at trial was Jennifer's blood work, showing a large concentration of methamphetamines and a small amount of oxycodone in her system at the time of her death. Brian Greenwell was found guilty of murder, attempted murder, and tampering with physical evidence. He was a habitual felony offender and was sentenced to life in prison. Jody Cecil was convicted of complicity to murder and complicity to attempted murder and was sentenced to 20 years. The trial lasted five days and the jury deliberated for a very short one and a half hours before returning their verdicts. Following interrogation, Detective Royce's interaction with Brian Greenwell immediately after talking to Jody. As always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, Brian, what's happening, man? What's happening? My name's Detective Royce, Detective Hogan. Hey, man, sorry it took me a little while to get over here. I was uh, finishing up talking to Jody. Jody? Mm hmm.
has two guns. She's a little upset about what? Yeah, that's what we're here talking about. She's a little upset. Um, I will tell you that she. I'm trying to remember her exact words, but it was more along the lines of, "I don't want him, tell him I don't want him to be scared, and uh, and to talk to us." Anything else on along that? Because I wanted, I want to go talk to him. I said, "I can't let you do that." I said, "I may be able to let you do a recorded statement or write a note, but so that you do one now." I have a recording. I also have another recording that I'd like you to view as well. But I, I can't ask you any questions yet because you're in custody for something else. I don't know. I know it's some kind of dope charge. I know you had some stuff there. So before I actually ask you anything or tell you or show you anything, I need to read your rights. You had those read before, correct? No. You've never had your rights read? No. Okay. Let's go through that. I mean, when I was younger, yeah. Right. I mean, well, I mean you know what I'm talking yeah, about. I know what you're talking okay. about. Okay. Well, I want to go through this because, like I said, and I brought a picture of your kiddos. Oh, I, gave, I, gave her, I gave her a picture of them, too. All right. Before we ask any questions, you must understand your rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Right to talk to a lawyer prior to any question or making any statements. Have him present with you while you're being questioned. Can't afford to hire a lawyer. Won't be appointed by the court to represent you before any questioning if you desire one. You may stop the question or make any statements at any time by refusing to answer further or requesting to consult with an attorney prior to continuing with the question or making statements. And those are your rights. And the second part of this uh, this form is just it's a waiver of your rights and it basically says I've, I've read the statement of my rights or I've had them read to me. And I understand what my rights are and I'm willing to make a statement and answer some questions. I don't want a lawyer at this time and understand and know what I'm doing. No promises or threats have been made to me and no pressure or coercion of any kind has been used against me. You understand what coercion means, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I'm guessing you might have an idea of what you don't have an idea of what, what you might want to talk to me about or what I want to talk to you about. Okay. And, and it has to do with the apartment you guys used to live over on Shelby Street. Oh, well, yeah. Man. Does that ring a bell yeah. in that incident? Okay. What do you know about that incident? As far as I know, they was, that was supposed to have been us, as far as my understanding. Mm -hmm. Because the guy, Terry Payne, that uh, he was supposed to send somebody over there to talk to us or something like that. I don't know. Because... They used to have deals. Well, I mean, I know the guy too, you know. They used to have dealings or some, something like that. And I'm not even sure if it's him, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going by what I've heard. Um, that he got ripped off for some dope a few times. He got upset about it. And the only reason why he wouldn't come confront her by herself, you know what I'm saying, because of me. Well, she never ripped him off on no dope anyways. It wasn't her. You know, it was... So this was, it was geared towards Jody, is what you're telling me. Yes. And as far as I know that somebody was supposed to send some people from Chicago, some black dudes, said it's not about the money now, it's not about the dope, it's about the principal. And he, Terry Payne, told me this. And I told him, I said, well, you better go back and tell them, you're right, it's not about no money, it's not about no people. If anybody comes fuck around with my, my fiance, then that pulls me, you know what I'm saying? I'm involved. And he said, well, it's already too late. The, the call's been made, and that uh, some people from, what do you say? New Orleans or something like that. Fucking Louisiana is up here looking for it. And that's when I noticed that it started being followed. And I'm like, hold up, you know, maybe this shit's true. But I've been thinking it's all, you know, you know how people are talking, you just try to scare somebody. And I kept noticing people follow me, and I kept noticing people follow me, and I'm like, hold the fuck up, hold, you know. So I made a phone call, and I was like, dude, what the fuck's going on? He said, man, I 
So I told him, he said, I'll try to go talk to him. I said, then you better do more than try to go talk to him. And for the past, mm-hmm. I don't know, a month and a half, something like that, every time I walked out the door, I was being followed. And for the life of me, nobody believed me. I mean, <laughs> I told everybody, I said, man, somebody is following us. Somebody's following me or somebody's following you. Somebody. And then I got locked up. <laughs> what happened with that? Hello. That. <laughs> I'm not the dope police, so, you know. I just. It's, I mean, I heard you get the south end of little tour, and uh, yeah, I like crash and burn. Me. But I mean, not one time did nobody ever say police. Nobody said. I mean, the whole time that I told everybody I was being followed, I mean, I had people run up on me and like, I take off. Nobody ever said cops, you know. So I don't know if it's the cops or if it's them or whoever, whatever, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, shit. So I've done what I know to do best, protect myself and get the hell out of that situation for a moment. But that situation, it was the same thing. Two cars whipped up on me. Then once I took off, yeah, he hit his lights. I'm like, you know, for, I got a set of them lights, which I do. You know what I'm saying? I got a flashlight that turns, you know what I'm saying? You click it one time, it says our flash is red, white, and I'm in red, blue, and two. them lights, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, so nobody's ever said, stop, police, this is the Louisville, this is the feds, this is the whoever, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I didn't stop, you know, even when we got back to the house we were staying at, not one time did anybody say police, it's police, it's the whoever, blah, blah. They just told me to get the fuck down or they're going to blow my goddamn brains out. I'm like, well, uh, I'm, <laughs> there's a chance I got to take. Either they're the police and then once they all started coming up on me, I noticed it was the police because I seen them. All the equipment and shit like that, you know, and I was like, well, maybe it's this cop, so I got down. Who, who all did you get arrested with that night? Me, Jody, uh, Lala, and Chris. Does Lala have a real name? Everybody keeps saying Lala, and I'm like, I don't know who she is. He said, I'm not the dope police, but I'm just curious for my yeah, own. It's a uh, lord. I know it's lower. Okay. I don't know what I asked you. It really doesn't matter for me. I'm just curious because yeah. everybody says La La. I'm like, okay, that's my name. La La was on a, on a kid's TV show. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let me take you back to that, that apartment on Shelby. How, how long did y'all stay there? Man, I, can't, I just got out of jail, and I don't know if she's had it before. I went in, mm-hmm. or before, right before I got out, or what, I think it was only, I was on there like a couple of weeks, maybe, I think, something like that, maybe a little longer, I know it's like between two, about two weeks, two or three weeks, something, okay. something like that. And you guys never went back to that apartment? Yeah, we went back. You did? Yeah. We went back and got some of our stuff. I mean, we'd seen the landlord, nothing was ever said. We'd seen cops sitting there, nothing was ever said to us. I was thinking, well, this ain't got nothing to do with us, I hope. Did, did you know those neighbors that y'all talked to them? Y'all never, you ever saw them before? Yeah, we seen them. Hey, if I showed you a picture of them, would you know who they are? I'm pretty sure okay. I would be. Yeah, I think, yeah, it was her. Now the guy. Now this is a little bit older picture. I think he had probably just gotten out of jail. His hair may have been a lot longer. Mm, yeah, if you put long hair on him, it looks like him. And y'all didn't have any interaction with them? No, nah, other than uh, I mean, passing them through the hallways, or because it was just I think it was what one, two, two, two apartments. Yeah, it's just two. So, yeah. Because the front room, it was a, like a little storage or something like that. Right, right. And the back room was supposedly where he stored all this stuff for, I guess, the strip clubs that he owned or something. But I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, he owns a couple strip clubs, you're right. All right. Um, 
What do you actually know about what happened over there? What have you heard? What do you know? I just heard that somebody got shot, shot got killed, or something like that. And then we stayed away for a couple of days because that's when I found out that supposedly they was there for her and us, you know what I'm saying? They was supposed to be us. So I was like, you know, I'm, we made the decision to stay away for a couple of days because. I mean, hell, if somebody wanted to talk to her, they planned or knew her phone number, knew her cell phone, knew her name, everything else, you know, wherever they tried to contact us. At least, as far as I know, nobody ever tried to contact us. Which, I mean, the house, the apartment wasn't even, it was her apartment, mm -hmm. wasn't in my name or nothing like that. So. Right. And you know there was two victims there? Did you know that? No. Both of those two people I should No, it's just, they told me it was just, uh, the lady. Well, both of them were shot. And, uh, this is what I want to show you. He didn't die. Do you remember, do you know your neighbors that live next door? you know who they were? If I showed you pictures of your neighbors, do you know who they were? Yeah. Were your neighbors involved in any of this? situations and shit didn't go as planned. Um, I believe that's what happened here. I don't believe there was malicious intent going in. I think shit escalated and went bad. And I told her I wanted to help her try to get to the good side of this to not paint her into a negative light on it. And I said I'd I told her, I said, I will give you that same opportunity and tell you the same things. And I've told you both the exact same things. And that's how I want to present it. I don't bullshit people. You know, I'll tell you what I got. I mean, fair enough. I mean, I've got a living victim who put you there. I've got Jody who said you were there. And I want to hear from you what in the world happened. Like I said, I think something went wrong. I don't think you got there on. I want to hear the rest of it, what Jody had to say. What Jody had to say? I don't have Jody on a video. But you said you had her on a... I have her on audio recording. I just did it. I don't have it on a disc yet. I still have it on an actual recorder. Can I hear it? I don't know. Let me see if I can do that. I don't even know if I can do that. I mean, it's on, it's on this recorder that's in my pocket right now. The same one that I'm having on right now. Well, let's find out if we can do it. Because, I mean... Is that going to change what? 
No, man, I want to. I'm not going to play bullshit. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not going to play it word for word so you can mirror your story off. Oh, no, no, I don't. I've been doing this a little while. Yeah, I don't. I don't expect you to do that either. But I would do like to know what she's saying. What she's. All right, I can give you the. I can give you the details of. I guess the general of what she said is that, and he goes on to say as well that they were involved in a domestic situation. And apparently, you know, he might have been getting the best of her. She came over for help. You guys go back over to their apartment. It happened inside their apartment. Uh, like I said, you guys intervened, honestly, on the good side of this to start with, trying to help her out. And things went bad from there. Does that sound, is, is that a fair statement of how things may have occurred? No. I mean, it's not. No, but I had no, yeah, I know these people. I don't know them personally. You know what I'm saying? I know them from that apartment. And yes, we did go over there, but that's it. I mean, hell, is you fingerprint the place, you can find my fingerprints on a couple of things. So it's where I would walk in the room. Mm -hmm. Pick some stuff up, you know, like, like laying everywhere. So I was like, you know, there. I mean, other than that, I know right now you're trying to figure out where to go with this because, but I don't want you to start digging yourself a hole. No, what y'all want me to do is commit, to, you know, saying, oh, I don't need you. you. I don't need you to. I've got. You know, and I've got Jody's statement. I've got enough to walk out of this room right now. What I'm trying to do is give you an opportunity to do the same thing that she did, which is go at it at the angle we were trying to help and things went bad. It's a whole lot better than we went just not giving a statement and me going off of him. I mean, do you think if I put a guy who's paralyzed from the neck down on a ventilator with an interview like this, up to 12 people on a jury, they're not going to sympathize with him instead of you. I'll take that all day long, twice on Sunday. Wow. You know? I, 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 I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a realist. Yeah. You know, I'm a realist. So I'm looking at it too. I'm like, yeah, I mean, as it stands right now, I mean, regardless of what I say, I'm fucked in this situation. And I'm trying to say that there is a little bit of an out here to make it better on you, to not make it look like, I don't believe you're a cold-blooded killer. No, I don't believe that at all. Nothing suggests that to me. I think you're a smart guy, and I think you got involved in a situation that you probably shouldn't have. Well, not to say you shouldn't, not that you shouldn't help somebody out, but I think shit went bad real quick. And I don't think you, anybody should be judged on just one thing alone. There's a whole series of events that happened here to get to basically where we are right now. And I just want you to, you know, think about a lot of different things. And I know I've thrown a lot at you at one time, you know, and I, I can't, can't say I understand where you're at right now because I haven't been there, but I can empathize with you. I do this every time. What do you mean you do this every time? I always try to protect everybody. You shut that before off for a minute so I can ask you a question. With this guy? Yeah. And the woman in there. That's been recorded, right? I don't know about this room because this is a corrections room, so I'd have to say, you know, I don't know. What happens if I go? In? I mean, because I know the story here. You know what I'm saying? I know the whole thing. What happened? What was that? I'm guessing I just got an email because this is my actual work computer. Uh, <laughs> well, look, how can I get Jody off of all this? I mean, I think, I think she's the least culpable of, of any, anything that happened. 
you know, I think she was just there. Um, and what he says and what she says really jive in line with the support. They support each other in their statements. Um, but, I mean, it's honestly just going through the story. And I think I know the story. If I told you the story, then would it sound anything like what I started it off as? A domestic thing that you guys got involved in. You end up in a fight with them, with a gun. It goes off. And I can't tell you any more than that because that's where, you know. By any chance, does that seem like a story that of what may have happened? Yeah. And see, we can work with that because the beginning part of it changes a lot. There's a difference between you going in and saying, I'm going to kill somebody. And you going in, I'm trying to help somebody, and then shit goes bad. There's, that's way different things there that we're talking about. One's a whole lot better than the other. I mean, the end result was that, some, that people lost their lives, yes. But it's a whole lot different when it comes to talking to juries, talking about charges, you know, those type of things. That is, that is a night and day situation. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Yeah, you know, like you say, y'all can paint me out to be the fucking. Wow, man. I mean, as it stands right now, with just them two saying that shit, y'all got enough evidence to back me on And, and that. that's what I said. I'm not going to bullshit you. I told you that. I said, I got enough right now. I can walk out of the room. But that's not what I want to do because I believe I'm getting everybody a fair shot at this. I've been doing this 18 years. You know, I, I don't bullshit when I talk to people. I don't play that old mind game where I run around in circles and we talk for six hours. I tell you what I got. I tell you how, how good I, you know, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> if I got something this week, I'm going to, you know, be like, hey, this is what I got. Here's your chances, 50-50. This is not a 50-50 chance kind of thing right here. I'll tell you that. No, it's uh, screw me all the way around. <laughs> so that's why I'm trying to give you, I want you to see the how I'm trying to let you get out in front of it and tell your part of the story on it. And, the only way I can smoke a cigarette. I think we can probably make that happen. We let her we let her go down to the basement and smoke one. And come back and finish up the story. Cool. I think we can do that. Sit tight for a minute, bye. Let's see what we can work out for you. Uh, regardless of what happens, I mean, y'all can't. No, I, think, I mean, I, I think I know what you're trying to get out, and that's to me. You don't want anything to happen to Joby on this. Does that sound about right? I really think that's going to depend on a lot about what we talk about, what you tell me on this. I think I think I can minimize her involvement. Minimize it. Well, I mean, she is there. I mean, have you ever heard? Have you ever heard about uh, doing a bank robbery? Yeah. You're the you're the robber. You go in and rob the store. I'm just the driver. We both get in a car chase and get caught down the way. You know what charge I get? Accessory. You know what charge you get? It's a robbery. Yeah. I still get robbed. I mean, it, she's there with you, so she is a complicit. You know, she is complicit in this, and uh, not calling her. You know, she didn't. There was nothing done on her behalf to help or stay or call or anything. So that's that's her little bit of a problem, but her involvement is minimal. It's Kind of, she did. Try to. What you try to do? Try to help. After they were shot? Mm -hmm. What did she do? And this helps her. We'll talk about it all here. 
a second. Who got me? Calm down. Who got me? Now give us time. You know, get your stuff in order. And I'll see about setting up that cigarette. I appreciate it. Okay. Huh? Got mine. I'm going to get your mouse. Okay. Grab some water or something. Yeah. yeah. I'll get some. still down here? Uh, they already took her back to CCC. They, yeah. have, they like account or something they have to do at certain times, I don't know. So we're going to go, as soon as he comes back there, we're going to go down, go downstairs. Now, we're not going to talk about anything that we talk about in here. It's just going to be, you just smoke, get your thoughts together, okay? You can come back here and we'll talk tomorrow. Any questions? Ready? Okay. Got your water too, okay? I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah. Shoot it to me. Are you here? I mean, I've talked to some other people. I know it's been bothering you. Everybody has said that you've been acting different. It's really been bothering you. So it's been noticeable to other people. You take that weight off. Throw it on me. Get it off your shoulder, man. I mean, you ain't gonna try hitting me with no fucking death penalty or nothing. No, there's no aggravating circumstances. We're gonna try to get this done as quick as possible. Yeah. So I'm gonna be honest with you, I can't sit in that jail. I understand. Joey didn't have nothing to do with it. She did try to. Get help in her. I mean, I even tried, but <laughs> she came over. She said, "Uh, he's over beating." Him. So we walked over. We didn't even walk in the apartment at first. I was like, you know, what's going on? Joe didn't even go over at first. She was like, we can go over at 17. I said, yeah, you know, so I walked over. Dude was over, breaking shit, throwing shit, cussing her. All three of us were standing outside, even as the, the girl was standing outside, you know what I'm saying? I was like, what if this leave or come over here or do something, you know what I'm saying? Just, she wanted to blame the town and call the cops. She went back inside, he grabbed hold of her or something like that. And that's so he was like, you know, you gotta help her. Because I guess her deformity or something mm -hmm. like that. So I walked in there and I separated them and this and that, and that's when to be honest with you, I don't even I can't even remember it. How the gun came into play, for real. Well, we started uh, kind of wrestling around and the gun went off. And then it went off again. How many times do you think it went off? Honestly, man, I don't even know. I was, I mean, I was. I blacked out or something like that. I don't know, man. It's like. I'm guessing two or three times. 
three, something like that. Remember hearing three gunshots. Do you remember which one you shot first? No, I still couldn't. I don't I think mean, I was just like, I freaked out. I was like, man, what the fuck? I came over to help somebody. This shit happens. I think the. I know it went off once. I think it C got hit first. I'm not for sure. And then me and him was still struggling and it went off again. I do remember it. And that's when he fell on the bed and I was and I didn't know I, mean, I didn't know what to do. I mean I went over I didn't like you said it wasn't no intention of going over I was intended of nothing like that. You remember what about what time? I mean, I know this happened on Friday the thirteenth is when we were there, and it was later in the afternoon when we got there. But when do you think this might have happened? Was it all on that Friday? Because if I'm not mistaken, she was supposed to start that new job Friday morning at noon. Does that sound right? Do you know that? I Jody knew that. That's why I, I didn't. I, I don't know. I mean, I, after it was all done and everything, I, I, I might have heard Jody say some mess. You're supposed to start a job today or something like that. I was like, man, what the fuck, man? What do I do? I mean, Off, like, you know, what we do? We didn't even want to know what to do. She was like, let's call the cops. I mean, let's, I mean, because, like you said, I mean, we went over our intentions of helping, not hurting somebody, you know. And she never, Jody never entered the apartment whatsoever, as far as I know of. You know, she told me that she did. She said that. She got. She didn't go into the room that you guys were in, which is the back bedroom. But she said she made it into a part of it. But you said she tried to help him afterwards. So I mean, she was like, I mean, if she, it doesn't matter to me if she came in. That's that's empty room area. She came in. That's fine. It's not that doesn't get you in trouble. That makes you a normal human being that wants to come in and maybe try to help. Yeah, I mean, we was both. You know, what I'm saying she was like, you know, what I'm saying. Well, actually, I was kind of like up standing there, and I turned around and looked at her at the door, and I was like, well, what do I do? You know, so I was, I didn't know. And I still, I mean, to this day, I still can't tell you exactly from start to finish what happened, you know what I'm saying? I just know that. I was the one standing in the room while both of them was playing there. And Joey was like, you know, are you, you know, checking so are, they, are they still breathing or are they, whatever, you know what I'm saying? I was like, man, I don't know what, I mean, what do, how do you check to see if somebody's, you know, I don't know what they say. But in that situation, yeah. You know, and I do know that I, I'm not for sure if, the landlord called, or if Jody called the landlord, or what, I'm not for sure. But I did, I do remember hearing her say the landlord called, or the landlord's wife or something like that, saying something about she won't come back and cop some dope from them or something. <laughs> fuck that season break now. Now it's going to look like the fucking went there to rob him or something, which is that. Wasn't the case. I mean, nothing was took, nothing like that. And I was like, man, I just, I just didn't know what to do. I mean, I still don't know what to do. I mean, I don't know. What happened to the gun? What did you do with the gun? Destroyed it. 
melted it down. You melted it down. That's what you said. That takes a lot of heat. Yeah, I don't know. And it, well, actually, the gun didn't get melted down. It got took apart in the barrel that melted down. I was like, man, I don't know. So I gave the gun back to the person that I owned, that owned it. You know what I'm saying? He just let me borrow it. And I can't tell you his name, man, because I don't want to get to him. So then you destroyed it or did you give it back to the guy? No, I took it apart. Most of the gun went back. I mean, don't bullshit me. I mean, it's not, this is not a, that's not a big issue there. I, I'm just trying, my main thing honestly is, well, yeah, I would like, like to recover it, but I just want to make sure you just didn't toss it somewhere and some kid find it. That's more know, what I'm worried yeah, about. Yeah, I made sure that, yeah, I made sure that it wasn't no kid or no innocent bystander or nothing like that was going to kind of get picked up. I mean, yeah. Okay, what model was it? Uh, well, I know what caliber it was. I'm just wondering what model it was. Taurus, I think, mm-hmm. or uh, yeah, I think it was a Taurus. I'm pretty sure it was a Taurus forty. And, and you know, I know it's a forty, but I knew. I'm just curious. And, I mean, honestly, I tried blocking it out, but. You keep walking with that hammer. And if you try to, it's going to eventually come back out and it's going to eat and eat and eat. And I, I mean, I can tell how upset you are. Is there anybody else there with you guys? Nobody else. Right. Did you have the gun on you when you first went over there? Is this a I went back and got it, or did you have it on you when you first went over there? Right, I had it on me okay. because the situation that fucking everybody was saying that people was out looking for her and this and that, and I was like, I got so I. Kept it open just for her protection, you know. I wasn't going to let. I understand. Now, did you all, you said you didn't take anything from the scene at all? Okay. Did y'all leave anything or by any chance? Did y'all lose anything? I don't, honestly, I don't okay. know. I mean, I didn't even try fucking finding the shells that came out of the gun. I was just like, you know, I was. But I don't think that pretty much. Yeah. I know you, I know this happened in the back bedroom. Were they fighting in the back bedroom and you got in the middle of it? Or did you know you're trying to you and him got in a fight in the back bedroom? And it, I just want to be clear about it. Well they was fighting. First, I mean, we was all standing outside in the hallway. And we're talking about a physical fight, not arguing. Yeah, they we're were talking about physical fight. And I was like, you know, that's when Joey said, Ryan, you got to help her. You know, that's when I went, went in there. And then everything just happened so fast. And you know the rest. But I mean, she she did try to help him. I mean, I I didn't know what to do to help him. I mean, I just I freaked out. I, I said, 
still freak out. I'll tell you what, this whole thing, this whole situation, I mean, it sucks. And, uh, it, it, I mean, I was right. Was I not right from the minute I came in here and, and how things went down? Um, yeah. You know, and I still believe, you know, bad shit happens to good people all the time. But uh, this series of events doesn't paint you out to be a cold blooded, calculated, I don't give a fuck killer. I mean, it should happen, yeah. There's nothing we can do about that now. But the way that we have presented it, as you coming over to help, you know, there's a big difference. It, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but do you see a big difference between somebody who doesn't give a fuck and coming over there and, and, and just shoot people as opposed to someone who was there for a purpose? And I can confirm that purpose was there was a domestic fight going on and you get over there and shit goes bad. Yeah. There's a big difference there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a big difference. I, mean, I didn't even should have just went with my gut and just stayed out of it. But that's, I'm not that type of person. I mean, if I see somebody that needs help, I'm going to try to help. I'm going to just take this picture with you, too. I don't know if you have any of your kids with you. Because I think I think because of the way we talked here tonight, that getting to see them is going to come a whole lot sooner than it would have been if you had told me, no, I'm not talking more about the room. I mean, it could have happened either way, and... Man, I still had enough, you know. Yeah. So that's why I would really, I could, I would, that was what I was really worried about is that you wouldn't understand how important of a chance that I was trying to give you to, to get out. I mean, that you were in a hole. I mean, and you're still in a hole, but it's definitely not as deep as it was. Was it with your story out there? And it goes a long way with prosecutors and defense attorneys and judges and jurors. So we got to look at it as it's a bump in your road. That bump was sitting back on the back side and you hadn't crossed it yet. Now we're crossed it. Now we're going to figure out from here where we're going to go. You're going to get your life back on track. Does that sound like a good plan here? How about more? No. There's nothing but future in front of you now. You know me wrong. We're going to take a little bit of it here. But it ain't all of it. And what you do with the rest of it is up to you. We do never say it that way. Well, see, people I talk to have heard you say that, and I disagree with that. You gotta remember where we are. We're in Louisville here, Harris County. It tends to be a little bit more lenient, a little bit more liberal here. I hope so. And you've done yourself big time favors here. You know, you've done you've done the best you can for yourself with the situation you're in. I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna talk to the corrections people, make sure they know about everything. Any questions you have of me right now? Do you have anything? Okay. Right, so time. Back up here in a few minutes.